hello and welcome everybody so today we are doing the next part of the model millionaire as you can see over here uh, we are going to do the meanings the line by line explanation if you haven't followed do check the previous video that is provided with a lot of pictures and in a very interesting way you'll be able to understand every detail provided here now those who haven't followed my website this is my website lotskill.com do check it lot of content is provided over there even the explanation of this okay the written explanation line by line explanation is provided there also so although you will not find the pictures over there you will find it useful so do check it this is the second part and the last part of the explanation video okay so uh, till the end of the last video we saw that um, the man uh, was begging uh, were, had posed as a beggar and uh, our mr hugi felt very sad about his depressed state and wanted to help him and gave him some money okay now we will move to the next part then trevor arrived and hugi took his leave blushing a little at what he had done so hugi felt very happy that he could help this man he left he spent the day with laura got a charming scolding so he told laura what he has done and he got a friendly kind of scolding for his extravagance because of spending he himself did not have money no so he was scolded a bit in a very friendly manner by laura but uh, he was satisfied and had a had to walk home he had to walk home because he could not um, hire the cab na no? because he had paid the money to the beggar that night he strolled into the pallet club about 11 o'clock and found trevor sitting by himself in the smoking room drinking hock and seltzer that is a kind of drink so he had this mixture of this hard drink that he was drinking in that pallet club and he met a uh, hugi over there well alan did you get the picture finished all right he said as he lit his cigarette so he asked that is your work done finished and framed my boy answered trevor and by the by you have made a conquest that old, so he says that yes of course i have finished the painting and it is framed also but the strange thing is the man that means the beggar is extremely interested in you somehow okay he is extremely devoted to you i had to tell him all about you so i had to give him information about you okay who you are and every stuff and uh, because he was so very excited about you who you are where you live what your income is what prospects you have my dear alan cried yuki i shall probably find him waiting for me when i go home so possibly he is searching for me so he will go to my house sometimes uh, what happens and these poor people want more stuff once they see that a person uh, is get uh, he is getting from a person he wants more from that person so possibly he is going to come and wait outside my house but of course you are only joking poor old wretch i wish i could do something for him so he still feels very sad about him and says possibly i could help this man okay how would i help i think it is dreadful that one should be so miserable it is so sad that he looks so miserable his clothes are all torn i have got heaps of old clothes at home i have some old clothes we all have right so we can give it to that person who is needy uh do you think he would care for any of them do you think that he would accept them if i give it to him why his rags were falling to bits so his he was all in tatters his clothes were all torn so i believe i could give him those old dresses of mine but he looked splendid in them so he was looking very beautiful handsome like he his kind of beautiful is like beggarly beautiful right a beggar should use should wear those tattered clothes should be so beggarly that is his beauty so according to trevor his look was splendid i wouldn't paint him in a frock coat for anything so of course if he was wearing some frock coat or any other expensive dress i would not be painting him as a beggar what you call rags i call romance so i think that his tattered clothes uh, clothes actually help him to make him look like a beggar what you call it what seems poverty to you is picturesqueness to me so what you think is a kind of worn out clothes i take it as an art it is artistic and it is beautiful and there lies the story after all okay the beggarly story that i wanted to bring out in my picture however i'll tell him of your offer so okay i will tell him what tell him what you offered alan said hugi seriously you painters are a heartless lot so how could you be so cruel you can't you just find beauty in that poverty and you are drawing it and deriving money from it but you don't realize this man is suffering 
An artist's heart is his head, replied Trevor. And besides, our business is to realize the world as we see it, not we reform it as we know it. A second son meteor. So what is he trying to say? He is trying to prove his point that Yugi, see, uh, we are very, very serious painter is kind of, uh, you know, they use their minds more than their emotions. Their job is to show the world as they see it. Okay. It's not that they are going to change the world. They are not some philosophers and they are not going to, um, not some social activists. They are not going to change anything. We as artists, we are just to show what poor people look like, what rich people look like. We are not there to change the world. He, what, is he, what does he also say? He says that I am a shock and sun meteor, meaning that uh, we, it means that each, uh, everybody has their own profession, right? And he, this means, this is actually French word. So, uh, to each his own profession, okay? It means everything to him. So, my profession is art. I just need to paint it like a, a poor man, like a poor man. So, I have done that. And I am not feeling very, you know, sad about it or uh, frustrated about what I have done. You don't mean to say, so and now tell me how Laura is, the old model was quite interested in her. So the old model, so this man Trevor is a strange kind of a man. He has also shared uh, to uh, that beggar about Laura, that means about uh, Hughie's girlfriend. You don't mean to say you talk to him about her. So how could you tell the beggar about my personal life? Certainly I did. He knows all about the relentless colonel, the lovely Laura and the 10,000 pounds. His father, his father-in-law had said, Na, ki bring 10,000 pounds only then uh, I will allow you to marry my daughter. So he has shared everything to that beggar. So you can see that they are chatting in the palette club and all this is being discussed over here. You told that old beggar all my private affairs. So you have told me about all, told him all these also. How could you share to anybody and everybody? Cried Yugi, looking very red and angry. So he was extremely angry. My dear boy, said Trevor, smiling. That old beggar, as you call him, is one of the richest men in Europe. He is not a beggar. He is actually the richest man in Europe. Okay. And he could buy all London tomorrow without overdrawing his account. So without running out of money, Without any loss of money, he kind of spending an insignificant amount of money, he can even purchase, the, uh, he can buy all of London. That means he has a lot of money. He's kind of a billionaire or millionaire sort of a thing. He has a house in every capital, dines off gold plate. And that means his dinner is served from gold plates. He eats from gold plates and even has the power to influence international politics. So he can even prevent Russia going to war when he chooses. If he wants, he can stop Russia from going to war. He's that influential. Okay. Internationally influential, not just influential in Europe. What on earth do you mean? Exclaimed Hughie. So he could not understand that how can uh, Trevor call the beggar actually a very rich man? Okay. Next. What I say... What I say, the old man you saw today in the studio was Baron Hosburgh. So that man that you saw in the studio, this man is not actually a beggar. He is Baron Hosburgh. He is a baron actually. And he is a great friend of mine. Buys all my pictures and that, that means whatever I paint, he buys those and that sort of a thing. And gave me a commission a month ago to paint him as a beggar. So what he has done, he has given uh, Trevor some money uh, so that he draws this person, the baron, as a beggar. Okay. So why was the commission given? For this reason. Que voles vos? So what does it mean? Que voles vos la fantasie d'un millionaire? So he's actually a millionaire and he he's actually kind of, uh, he's going to wear the ragged beggar's outfit and is going to uh, be portrayed as a beggar. And I must say, he made a magnificent figure in his rags. So he actually wore those rags and he posed exactly like a beggar. So, or perhaps I should say in my rags, they are an old suit I got in Spain. So actually, the rags that he was wearing, as you have seen in the earlier picture, na, this one, this rag, is actually an old suit that I got from Spain. And that is what I gave him to wear. And in that, he was actually looking like a beggar. So he posed as a beggar he was actually a billion a millionaire right this man 
Baron Hosburgh cried Yugi. Good heavens, I gave him a sovereign and he sank into an armchair with a picture of dismay. Suddenly, uh, Yugi realized that he has actually given a millionaire one sovereign. Okay, and that is very humiliating for him because he did not understand from the looks of the person that he is a millionaire. He really thought he is a beggar. He had already given him a sovereign and that should be very kind of an insult to this billionaire, millionaire person, right? So he in dismay sat on the chair, gave him a sovereign, shouted Trevor and he burst into a roll of laughter. Imagine a millionaire getting one sovereign. My dear boy, you will never see it again. So of course you are not going to get back your sovereign. So an affair says the largest desotres, okay, meaning that his business is other people's money. So he is there to take other people's money. That's why he is a millionaire, okay, he earns and he is not going to give you money back, right? I think you might have told me, Alan, said Hughie sulkily, and not have let me make such a fool of myself. So I have just made a fool of myself. You could have told me beforehand that this man is not a beggar. He is just a model. He is just posing like a beggar. So I would not have given him the money and made a fool of myself. Well, to begin with, Hughie, said Trevor, it never entered my mind that you went about distributing arms in that reckless way. So I never came to know that you will give this person some arms, okay, some uh, kind of, he is begging and you give him some money. I never thought that you would do so. But you are giving a sovereign to an ugly one, by Jove, no. So I can understand you kissing a pretty model, but you are giving a sovereign to an ugly one, so you can kiss if there is a pretty model, a beautiful uh, kind of a handsome, a beautiful lady, okay, a cute lady, you can go and kiss his hand, kiss her hand maybe, but I never thought that... Uh, uh, if this is an ugly model, okay, this is just like kind of a, a beggar in tr in rags and wrinkles. It's not at all appealing in any way, okay, like a girl, beautiful girl. Even then you gave him a sovereign, how could you do it? I never thought you would do it. Besides the fact is that I really was not at home today uh, to anyone and when you came in, I did not know whether Hosper would like his name mentioned. So, he is uh, staging as a model, as a beggar. So, I did not know at that time whether he would be satisfied if I went and shared with you that he is actually a millionaire uh, posing like a beggar. So, I did not know that at that time and I was not home before hand also and therefore um, I uh, you know he wasn't in full dress so uh, especially because the baron wasn't dressed in fancy clothes that time and he did not possibly want to reveal his identity so I did not tell you what a duffer he must think me so possibly he is just mocking my foolishness not at all he was in the highest spirits after you left so when you left uh, I don't know why but he was extremely satisfied Okay, and uh, kept chuckling to himself and rubbing his old wrinkled hands together. I couldn't make out why he was so interested to know all about you, but I see it all now. He will invest your sovereign for you, Yugi, pay you the interest every six months. So possibly he is going to invest your money in some stock exchange market and from there he is going to bring you a lot of money. Every six months you will get its interest and have a capital story to tell after dinner. So possibly what he is going to do is, Baron will have an interesting story to tell the social gatherings whenever he will meet some people. He will share this very funny and interesting story that being a millionaire, he got one sovereign as a uh, as arms. Okay. So possibly he will share this and he might invest your money in some business and give you its returns. I am an unlucky devil, growled Yugi. The best thing I can do is to go to bed and my dear Alan, you mustn't tell anyone. That means go to bed means I just want to forget it. Okay, I just want to sleep over it and uh, sleep through it and I want to forget it. He asks Trevor not to tell anybody because of course this is a humiliation. People will make fun of him. Okay. Chalo, next page. Nonsense, it reflects the highest credit on you. So, uh, you mustn't tell anyone. I shouldn't dare show my face in the row. Row meaning in some social gathering. I don't want to meet and I don't want anybody to know this. Okay. Nonsense, it reflects the highest credit on your philanthropic spirit. So, of course, you should share it because this is kind of philanthropy. That means you do, uh, you try to do good to people. Okay, You try to help other people Okay, without any intention to make profit. So you should share it with everybody, Hugi. Don't feel ashamed of it. And don't run away. Have another cigarette and you can talk about Laura as much as you like. 
so just don't worry about it just uh, let us talk about laura however yugi wouldn't stop but walked home feeling very unhappy and leaving alan trevor in fits of laughter so alan trevor could not control his laughter he felt it so so very amusing how his friend had given uh, a sovereign to a millionaire the next morning as he was at breakfast the servant brought him up a card on which was written monsieur gustave nodin de la part de mem le baron hosberg meaning uh, the card with uh, had the name that means wanted to meet as you can see in this picture no they will send cards and on it the name of the person who wants to meet is going to be written so the name of this person is written monsieur gustave nodin he wants to meet our hugi so the servant hands it over to hugi while he was having his breakfast so the card is sent by baron hosberg okay i suppose he has come for an apology possibly because he fooled me with uh, his poorly look He's, he has sent some apology said hugi to himself and he told the servant to show the visitor up so he told the servant to bring um, our uh, nodin monsieur gustave nodin he asked uh, him to be brought in and old gentleman with gold spectacles and gray hair come into the room and said in a slight french accent have i the honor of addressing monsieur erskin so I, I should am i talking to monsieur erskin hugi bowed that yes i am the one i have come from baron hosberg he continued the baron he could not complete his words immediately hugi started saying i beg sir that you will offer him my sincerest apologies stammered hugi So Hugi is stammering, saying, "I'm extremely sorry. I did not know that he was a millionaire, and that is why I gave him the sovereign. Of course, I did not have the audacity if I had known that um, he was not a beggar. He was a millionaire. I'm extremely sorry for that um, unintentional insult." Okay, so. Yes, the Baron said. The old gentleman with a smile has commissioned me to bring you this letter. So he has given a letter. to me so that i hand over the letter to you and he extended the sealed envelope so he gives in the letter what does the letter contain on the outside was written a wedding present to hugh erskin and laura merton from an old beggar and inside was a check for 10000 pounds so from the uh, amount of money we can understand how our hughy would be satisfied because this is the amount that was required for him to marry laura right so he has got his 10000 pounds as a gift from the beggar when they were married alan trevor was the best man so he was shocked like anything as you can see in this picture and soon after this they were married they were married meaning laura and hughy were married in the wedding alan trevor played a huge role and the baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast so the baron also came to their wedding millionaire models remarked alan are rare enough but by jove model millionaires are rarer still so millionaire models that means those who are hugely extremely rich they coming as models is something rare that we can understand because they don't have that much time to invest in pictures but what is more rare is model millionaires that means the people like posing as a model a millionaire who is posing as a model uh, is kind of even strange and extraordinary and rare because uh, this person has actually posed as a model who is not uh, and model was actually of what of a very poor man of a beggar okay so that is even more extraordinary all right so he is posing as a millionaire imagine i want to pose as a millionaire so i will look rich and i'll sit like a rich man and i can of course pose but somebody who is actually a millionaire and he poses for something else like being a beggar that is very strange and also very amusing and extraordinary okay so from here we uh, have discussed the whole chapter the to the complete chapter is done and i believe this has been a lot of uh, exciting one interesting one for you and questions we will discuss mcqs also but before that we are going to discuss some class notes as you can see the summary theme character analysis this is going to be the part 3 of the video and of course don't forget to check slotskill.com this is going to be extremely helpful for you because it has a lot of content that is uh, suitable for your board exams right so uh, board exams sorry class 9 exams also 9 as well as 10 when the class 10s will have this chapter okay or whatever chapter they has 
so that is all hope to see you in my next class again and uh, we are going to start with this topic summary theme character analysis and then again we will continue with the questions